Hey, Trez. Um, how do you evaluate your experience with the Lakers? Obviously, um, your, your role changed a lot throughout the course of the year. What, what, what do you kind of think of it, and, and how does that affect your future with the franchise? Um, you know, uh, I came in every day. I did my job. Um, I did what they asked me to do. Um, and I play my role, simple as that. Um, as far as my future, I don't know what that holds uh, right now. Um, we just finished playing last night, so you know, I can't give you the answer right now, brother. Um, you know, but you know, I came in, I did my job, and you know, whenever my number was called, man, I went out there and you know, played to the best of my abilities and left it all on the floor. Um, you know, as far as what uh, you know, my future holds uh, with the organization and things like that. Um, like I said, the game just ended last night, so. Um, you know, my next focus is going home and, uh, you know, being the dad and my kids. Trez, just from a sheer numbers standpoint, uh, the way the league is these days, uh, not many teams play three centers. And when you have one of your two best players also can play center, uh, what was the lockdown like? Uh, for for you, especially uh, once the team added Andre Drummond. <laughs> I mean, bro, you ask the questions that are basically shown on paper. It shows you the number of minutes I played. It shows you the amount of time I played. It shows you everything right there in your hand. So, as far as your question that you answer uh, that you have to answer to, I don't really know how you want me to answer that, brother man. Um, I, like I just told you, I played my role, man, and when my number was called, I was utilized and did what the team asked me to do. As far as, you know, how that rolled out in the rotation, you asking the wrong guy sitting in front of you, brother, man. <laughs> That's fair. Appreciate it, Trez. Yep. And? Trez, Trez, you just kind of said it. Um, but but did, did they give you any indications of stuff they they, they want you to, to focus on, to improve on, um, did any of that stuff in, in your meetings? Did, did the, any of that stuff come up? Um, no, um, it didn't. But... I'm a I'm a player, man. Um, I know uh, this league. I've been in this league for a little while. I'm not a rookie, so you know this is a little bit different conversation that you have with a guy who's been in the league a little bit longer. Um, you know, a guy who's a rookie. They kind of tell you know I want you to come back, be around the guys, work with the coaches, and you know this is what I want you to work on. Um, you know, I just finished uh, you know year six, um, so I'm a little bit further advanced. Um, so I kind of know what my game is a little bit um, in this league and I know what I want to work on as a player uh, because at the end of the day, man, you're auditioning for, you know, every team um, in this league. Like, that's just what it is. Like, it's not a lot of guys who just have a say of where they can pick and go, you know, and play nowadays, and we all know that. Did they express that, that you're a part of their future plans? Did they tell that to you? Uh, brother, man, you're digging a little bit too deep into what I don't have the answer to. Uh, nice try, but uh, like I told you, man, I'm, the game just ended last night. I'm about to go home and be a dad. You want to know about that? You can ask questions about that. But as far as my future uh, with being a Lakers basketball player, we'll, we'll worry about that later when, uh, you know, free agency and time rolls around, brother. Mike? Hey, Trezor, we were speaking to Devontae Kaycock earlier, and he mentioned meeting you randomly at an Apple store yep. back in the day, and then how it kind of it evolved to you taking him under his wing or under your wing this year. I, I just wondered what that relationship was like for you and uh, what you think of Devontae as a player. Uh, well, honestly, this is a tremendous relationship, man. Uh, he's a great guy. Um, and, you know, I actually had a chance to meet him when I was playing with the Clippers. Um, and I did meet him and his mom in the Apple store, just a random conversation. And, um, you know, she, she really trying to uh, start the conversation. And he was more so one of the guys like, why are you kind of doing this, mom? Like, we were kind of close to the same age. Um, but the conversation was great, man. Um, and uh, he kind of plays that same position I am, man. We're kind of utilizing that undersized four or five position, man. So just being able to be around him and actually work um, and battle against him every day, man, it was great. Um, I'm actually uh, glad to be able to, you know, have a person like that under my wing and be able to, um, you know, he turns back and, and called me a vet. Um, I had great veterans um, and guys like Trevor Ariza, um, you know, who who was probably one of the best vets that I ever had uh, in this game so far, him and Lou Will. Um, and, you know, just being around those guys, taught me how to be a pro and just for, you know, for him to feel that way about me, um, knowing that I did the right things that my vets taught me. Yeah, just to follow up on that, is that rewarding for you to be able to flip that, uh, to, you know, to 
to what you had experienced with some of the guys that took you under the wing? For sure, for sure, because uh, when you come in this league, man, you, you experience different type of relationships when you go on team. Some guys hate, some guys, you know, do the boot bags and all that. But, you know, I went to Houston that was a little bit more um, older team. And, you know, guys that was, like I said, uh, later on in their years, guys, uh, Trevor Ariza, James Harden, uh, Michael Beasley was on that team, uh, Jason Terry. Like, these are older guys, man, so they're not really more so on the, the terms of the, the games and things like that. So um, to be around a group of guys like that and to actually learn from it uh, was great. And, um, like I said, blessed to be able to have that and pass it on to, you know, the guys that I'm around who are younger than me. We'll take a couple more. Uh, Hey, Trez, um, I know obviously for the last year you've been dealing with um, your grandmother's passing and that's been very hard for you. Um, and obviously this season was grinding and had a lot of um, just extras with the protocols and the travel short off season. How was your, how did how, that test your mind a little bit during the season? Was, was there something unique that you found challenging mentally? Um, just given all the, the circumstances going on for you? Um, I find every day challenging, brother. I still find it challenging today. Um, you know, especially when it's, you know, it's, it's, it's dummies out there, uh, you know, heartless people who get on social media and just say the things that they say. Um, you know, I still, people, even to last night, had the people the nerve to get on social media and say, F my grandmother, you know which they wouldn't dare say to my face in any circumstance, you know. So I still deal with a lot of it to this day, brother, but it's okay. Um, you know, every day is tough, but it's okay. I still prevail, man. I have two beautiful kids. I have a great family around me, man, and I continue to grow as a man. Um, so whatever anybody feels that they want to do to try to tear me down, man, you can't, man. Uh, my grandmother watches over me every day, man. Um, you know, I'm walking with a different type of blessing um, every day I wake up, so... I'm still struggling to this day, man. It's still tough for me to talk about to this day. You see my voice and the picture of how I talk changes. Um, but it's okay, man. Um, I will continue to keep walking in the faith for God and keep continuing to uh, put the, you know, my best foot forward, brother. That's all I can do. Trust me, appreciate that. We'll take one more. <laughs> Harrison, go ahead. Hey, Trez, uh, about your kids and just like the, the grinding of this season and how short it was and how much testing you guys had to do and just traveling around and the, you know, shortened season, condensed schedule, all that. Like, how tough was it to go through that and just not get to be around your kids as much and all of that? So just the struggles of this season and all the challenges that it presented for everyone around the NBA. Um, it's definitely tough. Um, I mean, but, you know, my kids live in a different state, um, so we kind of, you know, got that uh, that that video function, but you know, anytime um, you know I bring, I can have them out to me. Um, I do it. Um, so I've seen my kids. Um, you know, on neutral times. Uh, you know, definitely not as much as I wanted to, but you know, hey, I have this time now, man. Um, as much as I don't want it to be, you know, I have it, um, and I'm not gonna you know waste any of it. Like I said, I'm you know about to do everything I can to enjoy as much time as I can with my kids um, before I get back to the grinding and working um, of my job. Simple as that, man. Um, you know, I got a lot of different things I do off the court as far as business-wise. So, 